polygon angle sum theorem 6.1b. We have one video for chapter 6 in the geometry playlist if you need it. In the last video, we learned that we can find the interior angle measures of a convex polygon by drawing possible diagonals from one vertex. And this creates a set of triangles, and by the triangle sum theorem, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. A hexagon with six sides will contain four triangles. We multiply four times 180 for each of the degrees of the triangle and get 720 degrees for the interior angle measures of a hexagon. In each convex polygon, the number of triangles formed is two less than the number of the sides n. So, as we said, a hexagon has six sides. It made four triangles. It was two less than six. So the sum of the angle measures of a triangle is n minus two times 180 degrees. So just to remind you real quick, a concave polygon, it kind of caves in, and we can draw an exterior diagonal. A convex polygon, all the vertices are pointing outward, and the diagonals would be on the interior. So here's the polygon angle sum theorem. The sum of the interior angle measures of a convex polygon with n sides is n minus 2 times 180 degrees. So we can find the sum of the interior angle measures of a convex octagon. We use the polygon triangle sum theorem. An octagon has eight sides. We substitute that in. We do 6 times 180 degrees. The sum of the interior angle measures of an octagon is 1,080 degrees. We can find the measure of each interior angle of a regular nonagon. Now, a nonagon has nine sides. We, first thing we do is we find the sum of the interior angle measures using the polygon angle sum theorem. It's got nine sides. We do nine minus two. That's a seven. We do seven times 180 degrees, and we get 1,260 degrees. Now, it's a regular nonagon, and a regular polygon has equilateral and equiangular right, properties. So this would be divided by 9, and our quotient would be the interior angle measures. Okay, So that would be one interior angle measure of a nonagon. Okay, that's pretty straightforward, right? We can find the measure of each interior angle of quadrilateral PQRS. We can see PQRS, we see this is a C degrees. This is 3C, that's C, and that's 3C. So we use our polygon angle sum theorem. It's a quadrilateral. It's got four sides. They're going to do 4 minus 2, and that's also using the polygon angle sum theorem, and so is this. If the measure of angle P plus the measure of angle Q and R and S is equal to 360 degrees, we can substitute these variables and coefficients in here, can't we? So we would have C plus 3C plus C plus 3C, and we combine the like terms, and we get 8C. 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We divide by the coefficient 8, and we find out that C is equal to 45. Well, measure of angle P and measure of angle R are 45 degrees, because they're C. Measure of angle Q and measure of angle S are 3 times 45, so they're 135 degrees. Okay, we got one last one, so this video isn't that long. We find the measure of each interior angle measure of pentagon A, B, C, D, E. We're going to do the same thing we did here, okay? So... We have five sides in a pentagon. We have five minus two. That's going to give us a three. Three times 180 is 540 degrees. So we know the whole thing is 540 degrees, OK? We know that this is 3z. That's 4z. That's 5z. That's 3z. And that's 5z. We know if we add up all the angle measures, it should total 540 degrees. We combine the like terms. And we get 20z is equal to 540. We divide both sides by 20 coefficient, and we get z is equal to 27. Now, all we have to do is multiply them. Measure of angle A and D are 3z. So 3 times 27 is 81 degrees for those angle measures. B 
is 4z, so that's 4 times 27, that's 108 degrees, and measure of angle C and measure of angle E are both 5z. 5 times 27 is 135 degrees, so we were able to find all the angle measures of that pentagon, okay? Our next lesson is the polygon exterior angle sum theorem. Then we're going to do some relations and functions to remind you of what we did in algebra, and then we'll move on to the next lesson, okay? So make sure you wrote down this theorem into your theorem notes so that you can use it in a proof. And I'll see you next time, and please hit that like button for me. Bye.